In today's world, it's really rare to find someone who doesn't watch a series. And that's because they make our lives much brighter and more diverse. After all, each time with anticipation and excitement watching the next episode, we experience together with the characters a variety of situations and emotions. The idea of this series is quite interesting and intriguing, so it is curious both in terms of its plot and in terms of the cast. The possibilities for the development of such a plot are endless, which is why right now it is being discussed all over the world. Meanwhile, the episode release date has already been determined. Spectators will be able to see a new episode on February 23rd. It is quite possible that the upcoming episode may strike viewers so hard that they will not be able to tear their eyes away from the screen. Knowing the creators of the series, this episode can easily plunge into the abyss of desperate events, and allow you to emotionally experience the full range of feelings, similar to the characters. The lingering hours until the premiere can be filled by watching other amazing series. But choosing a series to watch is not an easy thing to do. But don't despair, just follow our recommendations. Peaky Blinders is a British crime drama television series created by Stephen Knight. Set in Birmingham, England, it follows the exploits of the Peaky Blinders gang in the direct aftermath of the First World War. The fictional gang is loosely based on a real urban youth gang of the same name who were active in the city from the 1880s to the 1910s. The fifth series premiered on BBC One. Netflix, under a deal with Weinstein Company and Indemel, acquired the rights to release the show in the United States and around the world. Peaky Blinders was created by Stephen Knight, directed by Otto Bathurst, and produced by Katie Swindon. The series was filmed in Birmingham, Bradford, Dudley, Leeds, Liverpool, and Port Sunlight. The show has been particularly celebrated for its stylish cinematography and charismatic performances, as well as for casting an eye over a part of England and English history rarely explored on television. Historians have been divided over whether bringing characters and events from other decades into a 1920s story undermines claims to historical accuracy, or whether working-class life in the period is nevertheless depicted in a truthful and resonant way. Peaky Blinders is an epic centered on a crime family of mixed Irish Catholic and Romani origins based in Birmingham, England, starting in 1919, several months after the end of the First World War in November 1918. It centers on the Peaky Blinders street gang and their ambitious, cunning crime boss Tommy Shelby. The gang comes to the attention of Major Chester Campbell, a detective chief inspector in the Royal Irish Constabulary sent over by Winston Churchill from Belfast. Doctor Who is a British science fiction television program broadcast by the BBC since 1963. The program depicts the adventures of a Time Lord called the Doctor, an extraterrestrial being who appears to be human. The Doctor explores the universe in a time-traveling spaceship called the TARDIS. The TARDIS exterior appears as a blue British police box, which was a common sight in Britain in 1963 when the series first aired. With various companions, the Doctor combats foes, works to save civilizations, and helps people in need. Beginning with William Hartnell, 13 actors have headlined the series as the Doctor. In 2017, Jodie Whittaker became the first woman to officially play the role on television. The transition from one actor to another is written into the plot of the show with the concept of regeneration into a new incarnation, a plot device in which a Time Lord transforms into a new body when the current one is too badly harmed to heal normally. Each actor's portrayal is unique, but all represent stages in the life of the same character, and together, they form a single lifetime with a single narrative. The time-traveling feature of the plot means that different incarnations of the Doctor occasionally meet. The program was originally intended to appeal to a family audience as an educational program using time travel as a means to explore scientific ideas and famous moments in history. The show is a significant part of British popular culture, and elsewhere, it has gained a cult following. It has influenced generations of British television professionals, many of whom grew up watching the series. The program is listed in Guinness World Records as the longest-running science fiction television show in the world, as well as the most successful science fiction series of all time. The program originally ran from 1963 to 1989. There was an unsuccessful attempt to revive regular production in 1996 with a backdoor pilot in the form of a television film titled Doctor Who. The program was relaunched in 2005 and since then, has been produced in-house by BBC Wales in Cardiff.
Endless Love is a Turkish drama series. The series has become a milestone in the international history of Turkish series, being awarded by the International Emmy Awards for Best Telenovela in 2017, becoming the first and only Turkish series to win this award. In addition, it has also been the only Turkish series to become a finalist in these awards. The novel has become the most watched Turkish series in the world, being broadcast in more than 110 countries with successful audiences and has been translated into more than 50 languages. In its broadcast in the United States through Univision, it became the most watched foreign soap opera in the entire history of the country and the Turkish series with the highest audience, surpassing its main competitors. The love story remains the most watched fiction in Hispanic prime time with more than 2 million viewers every day and close to 4 million in its final episode, something that no other series has achieved. Currently, Kara Sevda remains the most watched Turkish series in the United States. The first episode was a resounding success. The plot opened up an interesting story for the viewer. Kemal Soydara is the son of a middle-class family. In his last year in mining engineering, a girl named Nian enters his monotonous life. Love is impossible because of the class difference between them, but they manage to be together. That is until the day that Kemal has to move to a Zonguldak mine, unaware that Nian will be forced to marry Amir Koskoglu, a man in love with her since they were children. Kemal isolates himself at work, and one day, following his actions to help in an accident at the mine, Kemal is promoted and assumes a position of power in the company. Five years later, Kemal makes the decision to return to Istanbul to face his past. Once Upon a Time is an American fantasy adventure drama television series that aired for seven seasons on ABC from October 23, 2011 to May 18, 2018. The action alternates between two main settings, a fantastical world where fairy tales happen, and a fictional seaside town in Maine called Storybrooke. The real-world part of the story unfolds with the characters of Emma Swan and her ten-year-old son, Henry Mills. Henry discovers the other people of the town are fairy tale characters. The audience is shown the backstory of the town's people as fairy tale characters, in conjunction with their unfolding stories in the real world. Most of the show's characters are extracted from famous fairy tales of the brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen, popular Western literature, folklore, Arthurian legend, and Greek mythology, as well as original Disney characters from the Walt Disney Company. The core themes of the show are hope and optimism. For the first six seasons, the series is set in the fictional seaside town of Storybrooke, Maine, in which the residents are actually fairy tale characters that were transported to the real world town and robbed of their memories. Adam Horowitz and Edward Kitsis conceived the show in 2004 before joining the writing staff of Lost, but wanted to wait until that series was over to focus on this project. Eight years before the Once Upon a Time pilot, Kitsis and Horowitz became inspired to write fairy tales out of a love of mystery and excitement of exploring lots of different worlds. They presented the premise to networks, but were refused because of its fantastic nature. From their time on Lost, the writers learned to look at the story in a different way, namely that character has to trump mythology. Lost is an American drama television series that aired on ABC from 2004 to 2010, over six seasons, comprising a total of 121 episodes. The show contains elements of supernatural and science fiction, and follows the survivors of a commercial jet airliner flying between Sydney and Los Angeles, after the plane crashes on a mysterious island somewhere in the South Pacific Ocean. The story is told in a heavily serialized manner. Episodes typically feature a primary storyline set on the island, augmented by flashback or flash-forward sequences which provide additional insight into the involved characters. Developed as a television adaptation of the 2000 Tom Hanks film Cast Away, Lost was created by Jeffrey Lieber, J. J. Abrams, and Damon Lindelof, who share story writing credits for the pilot episode, which Abrams directed. Throughout the show's run, Lindelof and Carlton Cuse served as showrunners and head writers, working together with many other executive producers and writers. Due to its large ensemble cast and the cost of filming primarily on location in Oahu, Hawaii, the series was one of the most expensive on television, with the pilot alone costing over $14 million. Lost has regularly been ranked by critics as one of the greatest television series of all time. The first season had an estimated average of 16 million viewers per episode on ABC. 
During its sixth and final season, the show averaged over 11 million US viewers per episode. Lost was the recipient of hundreds of industry award nominations throughout its run and won numerous of these awards, including the Emmy Award for Outstanding Drama Series in 2005. The plot of the first episode of the first season turned out to be very interesting. Oceanic Airlines Flight 815, a commercial airliner flying from Sydney to Los Angeles, hits turbulence and breaks apart in mid-air and crashes on a deserted tropical island in the South Pacific, with 48 survivors of the initial crash. Mysterious roars are heard from the jungle and trees are found knocked over. Jack, Kate and Charlie set out into the jungle to find the cockpit of the airplane so they can send out a distress signal using the plane's transceiver. They also find the pilot, who survived the crash and informs them that the plane had been steered more than a thousand miles off course before it crashed, and thus any rescuers would be looking in the wrong place. Bra Sick is a British comedy drama television series which premiered on Sky One on August 22, 2019 and became Sky's most successful comedy in seven years. The series follows the lives of Vinnie O'Neill and his friends in the fictional town of Holly. The first series consists of six episodes, which concluded on September 19, 2019, receiving positive reviews. Bra Sick follows the lives of Vinnie and his five friends as they live their lives in the fictional northern English town of Holly. The working class group commit various crimes to keep money in their pockets, but as they get older some of them wonder if there's more to life away from the town. Lucy Mangan of The Guardian, reviewing the series, gave it 4 out of 5 stars, saying, It is a hilarious, warm, brutal melange that works because it has heart without sentimentality and authenticity without strain. Creator and lead actor Joseph Gilgan has been praised for his performance as Vinnie O'Neill, with review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes commenting, Joseph Gilgan is wonderfully expressive as Vinnie, his volatile features continually scrunching together and apart like the top of a drawstring bag. Fargo is an American black comedy crime drama television series created and primarily written by Noah Hawley. The show is inspired by the 1996 film of the same name, which was written and directed by the Cone brothers, and takes place within the same fictional universe. The Cones were impressed by Holly's script and agreed to be named as executive producers. The series premiered on April 15, 2014. Each season is heavily influenced by various Cone brothers films, with each containing numerous references to them. The first season, Set primarily in Minnesota and North Dakota from January 2006 to February 2007 and starring Billy Bob Thornton, Allison Tolman, Colin Hanks, and Martin Freeman, received wide acclaim from critics. It won the Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Miniseries, Outstanding Directing, and Outstanding Casting, and received 15 additional nominations including Outstanding Writing, another Outstanding Directing nomination, and Acting nominations for all four leads. In 1997, a pilot was filmed for an intended television series based on the film. Filming of the first season began in Calgary, Alberta, in late 2013 and concluded in 2014. The first season garnered eight Primetime Emmy Award nominations. The first season of Fargo received critical acclaim. It currently holds a Metacritic score of 85 out of 100 based on 40 reviews, indicating universal acclaim. Sherlock is a British mystery crime drama television series based on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes detective stories. Created by Stephen Moffat and Mark Gatiss, it stars Benedict Cumberbatch as Sherlock Holmes and Martin Freeman as Dr. John Watson. Thirteen episodes have been produced, with four three-part series airing from 2010 to 2017 and a special episode that aired on January 1, 2016. Sherlock has been praised for the quality of its writing, acting, and directing. It has been nominated for numerous awards including Emmys, BAFTAs, and a Golden Globe, winning several awards across a variety of categories. The first episode, A Study in Pink, loosely based upon the first Sherlock Holmes novel A Study in Scarlet, was written by Moffat and directed by Paul McGuigan. The show has received critical acclaim, sustaining positive reviews across its first three series. However, its fourth series received mixed reviews. The show's popularity resulted in inquiries for coats similar to Sherlock's, reported retailer Debenhams. Garment manufacturer Bellstaff put the wool trench coat worn by Benedict Cumberbatch back into production before the series had ended. 
According to overnight data provided by the Broadcasters Audience Research Board, the highest overnight figure from the first series of Sherlock was 7.5 million for the opening episode, A Study in Pink, whereas the second series averaged over 8 million viewers. American Horror Story is an American anthology horror television series created by Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk. Each season is conceived as a self-contained miniseries, following a different set of characters and settings, and a storyline with its own beginning, middle, and end. Some plot elements of each season are loosely inspired by true events. Many actors appear in more than one season, often playing a new character. The first season takes place in Los Angeles, California in 2011, and centers on a family that moves into a house haunted by its former occupants. Although reception to individual seasons has varied, American Horror Story largely has been well received by television critics, with the majority of the praise going towards the cast, particularly Jessica Lange. The series draws consistently high ratings for the FX network, with its first season being the most viewed new cable series of 2011. Creators Murphy and Falchuk began working on American Horror Story before their Fox series Glee began production. Murphy wanted to do the opposite of what he had done previously and thus began his work on the series. Falchuk was intrigued by the idea of putting a different angle on the horror genre, stating that their main goal in creating the series was to scare viewers. From the beginning, Murphy and Falchuk planned that each season of the series would tell a different story. After the first season finale aired, Murphy spoke of his plans to change the cast and location for the second season. The first season, American Horror Story, Murder House, received generally positive reviews from critics. Shameless is an American comedy drama television series developed by John Wells that aired on Showtime from 2011 to 2021. It is an adaptation of Paul Abbott's British series of the same name and features an ensemble cast led by William H., Macy and Emmy Rossum. The show is set on the south side of Chicago, Illinois. With the premiere of the ninth season on September 9, 2018, Shameless became the longest-running original scripted series in Showtime's history. The series depicts the poor, dysfunctional family of Frank Gallagher, a neglectful single father of six. Fiona, Philip, Ian, Debbie, Carl, and Liam. He spends his days drunk or in search of misadventures, and his children learn to take care of themselves. The show's producers sought to distinguish this production from previous American working-class shows by highlighting how Frank's alcoholism and drug addiction affect his family. Shameless was adapted from a long-running, award-winning British television comedy drama of the same name. Most episodes begin with one of the main characters who breaks the fourth wall to berate the viewer about missing previous episodes. Then the show cuts to a recap montage of plot points relevant to the current episode, followed by the opening title sequence. The series is mostly filmed at a Los Angeles studio with some scenes filmed in Chicago. Shameless premiered on January 9, 2011, in the United States, becoming Showtime's highest-rated series debut on record across the network's target demographic. The first episode of the series generated 982,000 unique viewers, and was Showtime's largest audience for a series premiere since Dead Like Me in 2003. The fourth episode, posted 1.45 million total viewers. Shameless was the cable channel's best-performing first-year drama. Defying the usual downward trend following a premiere, the series built on its initial audience, becoming number one in its time slot among adults aged 18 through 49. Subsequent episodes' audiences fluctuated between a million and 1.14 million viewers. The March 27, 2011 season finale drew an audience of 1.157 million. The third season's premiere episode drew 2 million viewers, becoming the show's highest-rated episode to date. It has since maintained average ratings of just below a million viewers throughout the remainder of its episodes. Tim Goodman of The Hollywood Reporter said that Shameless is excellent, compelling television from the first moment. As long as it stays true to the roots of the original, it's going to be essential viewing. Dot. Lie to Me is an American crime drama television series. In the show, Dr. Cal Lightman and his colleagues in the Lightman Group accept assignments from third parties, commonly local and federal law enforcement, and assist in investigations, reaching the truth through applied psychology. The show received mostly positive reviews from television critics. Tim Roth as Dr. Cal Lightman, 
a brilliant expert in the science of body language, especially microexpressions, and founder of the Lightman Group, a private company that operates as an independent contractor to assist investigations of local and federal law enforcement through applied psychology. Though often confronted by people's skepticism, Lightman uses any technique he deems necessary to reach the truth, however elaborate or confronting. He is divorced and shares custody of his teenage daughter. He cares deeply about his colleague Gillian Foster. Season 1 opens with Cal and Gillian hiring a new associate, TSA officer Ria Torres, who scored extraordinarily high on Cal's deception detection diagnostic, and is in turn labeled a natural at deception detection. Her innate talent in the field clashes with Cal's academic approach, and he often shows off by rapidly analyzing her every facial expression. She counters by reading Lightman and, when he least expects it, peppers conversations with quotes from his books. The Office is an American sitcom television series. Based on the 2001-2003 BBC series of the same name created by Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, it was adapted for American television by Greg Daniels. The Office was met with mixed reviews during its short first season, but the following seasons, particularly those featuring Carell, received significant acclaim from television critics as the show's characters, content, structure, and tone diverged considerably from the British version. This season introduced the main characters, and established the general plot, which revolves around Michael Scott, regional manager of the Scranton branch office, trying to convince the filmmakers of the documentary that he presides over a happy, well-running office. Meanwhile, sales rep Jim Halpert finds methods to undermine his cubemate, Dwight Schrute, receptionist Pam Beasley tries to deal with Michael's insensitivities and flubs, and temporary employee Ryan Howard is acting mostly as an observer of the insanity around him. The first episode received largely mixed reviews from critics. After the first episodes, critics thought The Office would be another failed remake of a British comedy. Despite these criticisms, the remainder of the season earned mostly positive reviews among critics. The filming process is organized in such a way that the series took the form of a kind of reality show. Most of the dialogues in which are built on improvisation, and the actors do not know where the camera is at the moment. The first season was filmed in a real office. During the second season, NBC moved filming to a special studio that replicated the setting of the first season, including plaques and testimonials hanging on the walls. A detailed script was written for each episode of the series, but the actors were always given the opportunity to improvise. In early episodes, the camera crews were limited primarily to office space, but as the show expanded, the characters' personal lives were included, and the cameras took on the ubiquitous, even haunting function of making a character's entire life available to the viewer. Cameras begin to accompany the heroes from the office and to their homes. The Sopranos is an American crime drama television series created by David Chase. The story revolves around Tony Soprano, a New Jersey-based Italian-American mobster, portraying the difficulties that he faces as he tries to balance his family life with his role as the leader of a criminal organization. Tony Soprano has a panic attack that prompts him to see a psychiatrist. The pilot was ordered in 1997, and the show premiered on HBO on January 10, 1999. The series ran for six seasons totaling 86 episodes until June 10, 2007. The Sopranos is widely regarded as one of the greatest television series of all time. It has been the subject of critical analysis, controversy, and parody, and has spawned books, a video game, soundtrack albums, podcasts and assorted merchandise. Several members of the show's cast and crew were largely unknown to the public but have since had successful careers. Since its inception in 1999, the series has become a cultural phenomenon, gaining wide popularity in critical acclaim. This was due to the innovative approach to the description of the life of the Mafia, the American family, the problems of the Italian-American community in the United States and the boundaries of what society considers morality. The first episode was very exciting. At a family picnic, Tony collapses. In the hospital, during the examination, it turns out that this is not a physiological deviation, but a psychological one. On the recommendation of his doctor neighbor, Bruce Cusimano, Anthony goes to see psychiatrist Jennifer Melfi. Tony cannot tell all the details of his life due to the fact that his story is connected with crime. 
Moreover, Dr. Melfi immediately warned him that if she learns anything about even a possible harm to a person, she is legally obliged to report this data to the police. In the process of therapy, some details of Anthony's life are revealed, his attitude to life, to the family, to children and to his mother, which makes him very nervous, because no matter what he does, no matter how he behaves, his mother Livia always remains dissatisfied with him. Tony carefully hides the fact of visiting a psychotherapist from his friends. Vikings is a historical drama television series created and written by Michael Hurst. Vikings is inspired by the sagas of Ragnar Lodbrok, a Viking who is one of the best-known legendary Norse heroes and notorious as the scourge of Anglo-Saxon England and West Francia. The show portrays Ragnar as a farmer who rises to fame by raiding England and eventually becomes the Scandinavian king, with the support of his family and fellow warriors. In the later seasons, the series follows the fortunes of his sons and their adventures in England, Scandinavia, the Mediterranean and North America. The series began filming in July 2012 at Ashford Studios in Ireland, which at the time was a newly built facility. This location was chosen for its scenery and tax advantages. The first episode received favorable reviews, with an average rating of 71% according to Metacritic. Many characters are based on real people from history or legend and the events portrayed are broadly drawn from history. The history of more than a century has been condensed, people who could never have met are shown as of similar age, with the history amended for dramatic effect. The main role is played by Travis Fimmel. The man at the time of filming the series was already 35 years, but before the series Vikings, he got only a minor minor role. He was better known as a model, because he did not see himself as the fearless leader of the harsh northerners. After the series, the actor became one of the most recognizable among contemporary celebrities. Miracle Workers is an American anthology comedy television series created by Simon Rich. It is based on Rich's writings, with each season being based on a different work. Miracle Workers premiered on February 12, 2019, with its seven-episode first season. The first season follows Craig, a low-level angel responsible for handling all of humanity's prayers, and Eliza, a recent transfer from the Department of Dirt. Their boss, God, has pretty much checked out to focus on his favorite hobbies. To prevent Earth's destruction, Craig and Eliza must achieve their most impossible miracle to date. Alongside the initial series order announcement, it was confirmed that Daniel Radcliffe and Owen Wilson would star in the series. Simon Rich back when he wrote the book had high hopes that someday it would be filmed, but no one seriously believed that anyone would be able to recreate such a huge world on the screen. Daniel Radcliffe was a fan of the books even before the adaptation and was one of the first to join the cast of the series. At the same time, Simon greatly admired Daniel as an actor. Radcliffe is also an excellent producer, he helped the project in every way and took a lot of different creative decisions, from finding designers to the choice of the cast. In the early stages of script development, Owen Wilson was in the cast. But after the actor saw the final drafts of the script, his opinion disagreed with the screenwriters about his character. So he was replaced by Steve Buscemi. The idea of the creators was that God was flawed and vulnerable, just like the people he created. They wanted to see a character who is sometimes reckless and irrational. That's the kind of God Steve would play. Friends is an American television sitcom created by David Crane and Marta Kaufman. The show revolves around six friends in their 20s and 30s who live in Manhattan. Friends received acclaim throughout its run, becoming one of the most popular television shows of all time. The series was nominated for 62 Primetime Emmy Awards. Episodes depict the Friends' comedic and romantic adventures and career issues. From 1994 to 2004, 10 seasons of the series were filmed. A total of 236 episodes. It was shown with great success in various countries of the world and gained many fans. At the beginning of the series, Rachel leaves her fiancé right at the altar and moves in with her high school friend Monica. After leaving her fiancé, Rachel decides to start an independent life and give up her father's money. Starting working as a waitress in a coffee shop, she is pursuing a career in the fashion world. The work of the screenwriters was also highly appreciated. Serious investment in this part of the work on the series has paid off. Characteristic of The Observed was the fact that its plot is timeless, 
although it is applicable to acceptable clear time frames that coincide with the time of filming. The political and cultural cataclysms of 1990-2000 do not appear in any way in the dialogues of the characters. The closure of Friends was not only the end of the last season of one of the highest rated and commercially successful series in the United States, but also a turning point for the entire television. Experts talked about the end of an entire era of sitcoms, which was personified by the final episodes of Friends. The great series of 1980-1990 began to gradually fade into the past. According to experts, the series was originally aimed at a target audience from 18 to 49 years old. However, as the creators of the series noted, this was not a show for one generation, it was for everyone. The Tenth Kingdom is an American fairy tale fantasy miniseries written by Simon Moore. It depicts the adventures of a young woman and her father after they are transported from New York City, through a magical mirror, into a parallel world of fairy tales. From the first episode the series has won the hearts of millions of people around the world. In a hidden realm, fairy tale characters inhabit nine magical kingdoms where an evil queen plots to rule them. She is held in a fourth kingdom prison. This kingdom is under the rule of Prince Wendell, the spoiled, arrogant grandson of Snow White. Weeks before his coronation ceremony, the queen enlists the help of the brutal troll king and his three children to release her right before the prince makes his annual visit to the prison. Prince Wendell is captured by the evil queen, who is his wicked stepmother. She turns him into a golden retriever while her very own retriever is transformed into a facsimile of Wendell. In a panic, the transformed prince flees through the prison, stumbles across a mirror portal in the basement, and is transported to New York City. The troll king orders his bumbling children Burley, Blabberwort, and Bluebell to bring back the escaped prince while the queen releases a half-wolf prisoner to retrieve him instead. Meanwhile, regular Manhattan inhabitants, headstrong waitress Virginia Lewis and her oafish father Tony are entangled in the mishaps caused by the new magical arrivals to the city, including Wolf falling helplessly in love with Virginia and Tony being given six wishes, which he foolishly uses for personal gain, upon which they have a tendency to backfire. How I Met Your Mother is an American sitcom, created by Craig Thomas and Carter Bays for CBS. The series, which aired from 2005 to 2014, follows the main character, Ted Mosby, and his group of friends in New York City's Manhattan. The series was loosely inspired by Thomas and Bay's friendship when they both lived in New York. The vast majority of episodes were directed by Pamela Fryman, who directed 196 episodes out of 208. Known for its unique structure, humor, and incorporation of dramatic elements, How I Met Your Mother was popular throughout its run. It initially received positive reviews upon release, but reception became more mixed as the seasons went on. The show was nominated for 91 awards and received 21. In 2010, Alison Hannigan won the People's Choice Award for Favorite TV Comedy Actress. In 2012, seven years after its premiere, the series won the People's Choice Award for Favorite Network TV Comedy, and Neil Patrick Harris won the award for Favorite TV Comedy Actor twice. The series follows the adventures of Ted Mosby, played by Josh Radner, and his love life as a single man. His stories are narrated by Bob Saget as Ted Mosby 25 years later as he tells them to his adolescent children. The plot of the first episodes of the first season was very interesting. After his best friend Marshall proposes to his long-term girlfriend, Lily, Ted solicits help from his friend Barney to find the one for his life. He manages to get a date with Robin, a girl he met at his usual neighborhood bar, but threatens to scare Robin away when he accidentally reveals his love for her on the very first date. Meanwhile, Marshall accidentally hits Lily in the eye with the champagne stopper after they get engaged, forcing her to wear an eye patch. In an attempt to repair his situation with Robin, Ted instead pursues a casual relationship with her by inviting her to a series of parties. Marshall tries to write an important 25-page law paper, but Ted's parties and Lily's post-engagement desire distracts him. Meanwhile, Barney tries to end a relationship he unknowingly started. Ted agrees to let Barney disrupt his routine by taking an impromptu trip to the airport with him that eventually leads the duo to Philadelphia and trouble with airport security. Meanwhile, Lily and Robin go out for drinks, but Lily becomes jealous when she is not as successful with men as Robin is, for which she blames her engagement ring. Marshall travels between both situations in an attempt to rectify the group's problems.
Game of Thrones is an American fantasy drama television series created by David Benioff and D.B. Weiss for HBO. It is an adaptation of A Song of Ice and Fire, a series of fantasy novels by George R. R. Martin, the first of which is A Game of Thrones. The show was shot in the United Kingdom, Canada, Croatia, Iceland, Malta, Morocco, and Spain. It premiered on HBO in the United States on April 17, 2011, and concluded on May 19, 2019, with 73 episodes broadcast over eight seasons. Set on the fictional continents of Westeros and Essos, Game of Thrones has a large ensemble cast and follows several story arcs throughout the course of the show. The first major arc concerns the Iron Throne of the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros through a web of political conflicts among the noble families either vying to claim the throne or fighting for independence from whoever sits on it. A second focuses on the last descendant of the realm's deposed ruling dynasty, who has been exiled to Essos and is plotting to return and reclaim the throne. The third follows the Night's Watch, a military order defending the realm against threats from beyond Westeros's northern border. Game of Thrones attracted a record viewership on HBO and has a broad, active, and international fan base. Critics have praised the series for its acting, complex characters, story, scope, and production values. The final season received significant critical backlash for its reduced length and creative decisions, with many considering it a disappointing conclusion. The series received 59 Primetime Emmy Awards. After Game of Thrones' storyline began outpacing the published novels in the sixth season, the series was based on a plot outline of the future novels provided by Martin along with original content. Before season 4, Martin stated there was an issue with the television series being released before the source material could be written. According to Benioff, Martin gave the showrunners an outline on the final two books of the series. Stranger Things is an American science fiction horror drama television series created by the Duffer Brothers and streaming on Netflix. The brothers serve as showrunners and are executive producers along with Sean Levy and Dan Cohen. The series premiered on Netflix on July 15, 2016. Set in the 1980s in the fictional town of Hawkins, Indiana, the first season focuses on the investigation into the disappearance of a young boy amid supernatural events occurring around the town. The Duffer brothers develop Stranger Things as a mix of investigative drama alongside supernatural elements portrayed with horror, science fiction, and childlike sensibilities. Setting the series in the 1980s, the Duffer brothers infused references to the pop culture of that decade while several themes and directorial aspects were inspired primarily by the works of Steven Spielberg, John Carpenter, and Stephen King, as well as anime and video games. Stranger Things has attracted record viewership on Netflix and has an international fan base. The series has received critical acclaim for its characterization, atmosphere, acting, soundtrack, directing, writing, and homages to 1980s films. It has received many awards and nominations, including 39 Primetime Emmy Award nominations, for Golden Globe Award nominations, a British Academy Television Award nomination, two Directors Guild of America Award nominations, three Writers Guild of America Award nominations, and three Grammy Award nominations. Stranger Things gained a dedicated fan base soon after its release. The Mandalorian is an American space western television series created by Jon Favreau for the streaming service Disney+. It is the first live-action series in the Star Wars franchise, beginning five years after the events of Return of the Jedi. It stars Pedro Pascal as the title character, a lone bounty hunter who goes on the run after being hired to retrieve the child. Star Wars creator George Lucas had begun developing a live-action Star Wars television series by 2009, but this project was deemed too expensive to produce. He sold Lucasfilm to Disney in October 2012. Subsequently, work on a new Star Wars series began for Disney+. The Mandalorian premiered with the launch of Disney Plus on November 12, 2019. The eight-episode first season was met with positive reviews, was nominated for Outstanding Drama Series, and won seven Primetime Creative Arts Emmy Awards. And the first episode was just great. The episode stars Pedro Pascal as the Mandalorian, a lone bounty hunter who is given a mission by the mysterious client. The episode won two Primetime Emmy Awards. Five years after the fall of the Empire, 
Mandalorian bounty hunter collects a fugitive after a scuffle in a bar on the ice planet Pagadon and returns to the planet Navarro in his ship, the Razorcrest. He meets Grief Karga, the leader of the bounty hunter's guild, but he only offers low-paying bounties that will not cover travel expenses. Looking to get a bigger bounty, the Mandalorian accepts a mysterious commission for which Karga can only provide an address to meet the client who wants the details of the job to be private. The client, who uses Imperial Stormtroopers as bodyguards, gives the Mandalorian a vague target to bring back alive. The only information he is allowed to give is an age, 50 years old, and last known location. In exchange, the client promises to reward the bounty hunter with a container full of Besker, a rare metal used by Mandalorians to forge their armor. Receiving a single bar of Besker as a down payment, the Mandalorian meets with the armorer at an enclave housing fellow Mandalorians. The armorer, who melts the metal into a pauldron reserved for the Mandalorian, says the metal was gathered in the Great Purge and the excess will sponsor foundlings, as the Mandalorian once was. The nature of good and evil and the question of nature versus nurture is raised repeatedly throughout the Mandalorian. Heroes is an American superhero drama television series created by Tim Crane. The series tells the stories of ordinary people who discover that they have superhuman abilities and how these abilities take effect in the characters' lives as they work together to prevent catastrophic futures. The series emulates the aesthetic style and storytelling of American comic books, using multi-episode story arcs that build upon a larger, more encompassing narrative. Originally, Kring designed the series to have an ever-shifting cast. However, his motivation changed when he realized how popular the original cast was with audiences, therefore, he brought back most of the first season cast for the second season, with a few additions who received star billing. In its first season, the show features an ensemble cast of 12 main characters making it the third largest cast in American primetime television behind Desperate Housewives and Lost. The plot of Heroes is designed to be told in a way similar to the way comic books are told. Each season of Heroes contains one or two volumes. There are several main storylines in each volume. As the main plots develop, smaller, more intimate stories are told within them. Each main character's story is developed separately and as time passes their paths cross and it is explained how their stories are intertwined and connected. This is the story of ordinary people who discover extraordinary superpowers after a solar eclipse reveals them, and how these abilities affect the character's daily lives. The first season, known as Volume 1, Genesis, begins with a seemingly ordinary group of people who gradually become aware that they have special abilities. The story develops showing their reactions to those powers, and how that discovery affects their personal and professional lives. At the same time, several ordinary individuals are investigating the origins and extent of those abilities. Mohinder Suresh, a research geneticist, continues his late father's research into the biological source of the powers, while Noah Bennett represents, and is a lead agent for, a secret organization known only as the company that wants to control, and if necessary, terminate those who are gifted. After only having a short time to come to terms with their new abilities, each of the heroes is drawn into the final showdown. Heroes include some mysterious fictional recurring elements that have been ascribed to science fiction or supernatural phenomena. Kring and the creators of the series referred to these fictional elements as part of the mythology of the series. Kring confirmed that although the show has a unique mythology, he did not want to sink too deeply into it. Rather, Kring used volumes to wrap up ongoing plot lines instead of carrying storylines over long periods of time as in Lost. Season 1 received highly positive reviews. During the season, the American Film Institute named Heroes one of the 10 best television programs of the year. Resident Alien is an American science fiction mystery comedy drama television series created by Chris Sheridan, based on the comic book of the same title by Peter Hogan and Steve Parkhouse. In March 2021, the series was renewed for a second season which premiered on January 26, 2022. Alan Tudyk as Harry, the titular alien with an unpronounceable birth name who has crash-landed on Earth, killed Dr. Harry Vanderspiegel, and assumed his identity. He has been sent to Earth to destroy the human race, believing that this would benefit the planet, but he spends the series struggling with the moral ambiguity of his mission after absorbing the human quality of emotions. He is fascinated by humans and has learned how to speak English, as well as how to masquerade as a medical examiner, from watching reruns of Law & Order. 
Although he attempts to blend in with people, he consistently stands out because of his misunderstandings of social cues and awkward speech and behavioral patterns. As the series progresses, he learns more about human interactions and involuntarily develops human emotions and attachments while in disguise. He possesses superhuman strength, durability, and agility as well as advanced intelligence and shape-shifting abilities. Stuntman Keith Arbuthnet plays the alien in his true form, an androgynous, humanoid octopodiforms being. The plot of the first episode of the first season turned out to be very interesting. An alien spacecraft is struck by lightning and crash lands near the rural town of Patience, Colorado. Its pilot, whose real name is unpronounceable by humans, was on a mission to wipe out human life on Earth. Stranded, he must blend in by assuming human form and the identity of Dr. Harry Vanderspiegel, whom he killed upon encountering. For months, Harry has been searching the mountains for his device that will wipe out humanity and fishing the lake for Dr. Vanderspiegel's corpse. Harry is asked by Sheriff Mike and Deputy Liv to examine the body of Sam Hodges, the town doctor, and his behavior is off-putting but accepted. He even takes on the doctor's job with help from the head nurse Asta Twelve Trees, but he learns his true identity can be seen by Max, Mayor Ben Hawthorne's young son. Legacies is an American fantasy drama television series, created by Julie Pleck, that premiered on October 25, 2018. Legacies follows Hope Michelson, the daughter of Klaus Michelson and Haley Marshall, who is descended from some of the most powerful vampire, werewolf, and witch bloodlines. 17-year-old Hope attends the Salvatore School for the Young and Gifted. The school provides a haven where supernatural beings can learn to control their abilities and impulses. The first episode introduces the viewer to an interesting plot. Hope Michelson, a student at the Salvatore School for the Young and Gifted, assists her headmaster, Alaric Saltzman, in recruiting werewolf, Raphael, to the school. In the process, Hope runs into her old friend Landon, who is also Raphael's foster brother, but since the school for the supernatural is deemed to be too dangerous for humans, Landon is turned away. When vampire student, M.G., fails to compel Landon to forget his knowledge of the supernatural, it is assumed Landon has ingested vervain. Landon is locked up in a cell until it can clear his system. Hope visits Landon in his cell while Alaric's daughters Josie and Lizzie give Raphael a tour of the school. Hope tells Landon the truth about her supernatural origins. Knowing his memory will be erased, Landon kisses her. After Landon leaves, it is revealed the compulsions have still not worked and he stole a knife from the school before he left. Hope enlists Josie to help her locate the knife and Landon. Landon's bus explodes and as Sheriff Matt Donovan evaluates the crime scene, Alaric deduces it was Landon, who is missing, must be some kind of supernatural being. Hope vows to track him down. Silicon Valley is an American comedy television series. The series, a parody of Silicon Valley culture, focuses on Richard Hendricks, a programmer who founds a startup company called Pi Piper, and chronicles his struggles trying to maintain his company while facing competition from larger entities. Silicon Valley has received critical acclaim since its airing, with praise for its writing and humor. The show has been nominated for numerous accolades, including five consecutive Primetime Emmy Award nominations for Outstanding Comedy Series. The first episode introduces the viewer to an interesting plot. Richard Hendricks is a low-level programmer with futuristic internet giant Huoli. He is often taunted by his more successful work colleagues, and his ideas are dismissed by egotistical entrepreneur Ehrlich Bachmann, who owns the tech development incubator where Richard lives with fellow programmers Nelson Bigetti, Bertram Gilfoyle and Dinesh Chugtai. However when Huoli stumbles upon the music copyright service that Richard is working on, entitled Pied Piper, they discover that hidden within the useless application is the best file compression algorithm in the world, and news spreads quickly. Eventually Richard is caught between a $10 million buyout by Huoli CEO Gavin Belson, and a $200,000 investment from eccentric billionaire Peter Gregory, he must decide whether to give up his program to the highest bidder, or to take the investment and create a business out of it himself. After having a panic attack and vomiting, Richard runs into Peter's assistant Monica, who tells him that she believes in him and his idea. Richard decides to take the investment, and run the business himself. Co-creator and executive producer Mike Judge had worked in a Silicon Valley startup early in his career. In 1987, he was a programmer at Parallax, a company with about 40 employees. 
Judge disliked the company's culture and his colleagues and quit after less than three months, but the experience gave him the background to later create a show about the region's people and companies. Silicon Valley has received critical acclaim since its premiere. In January 2017, in an audience interaction by Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, Gates recounted the episode in Silicon Valley in which the protagonists tried to pitch their product to various venture capitalists, saying it reminded him of his own experiences. Charmed is an American fantasy drama television series. The series narrative follows a trio of sisters, known as the Charmed Ones, the most powerful good witches of all time, who use their combined power of three to protect innocent lives from evil beings such as demons and warlocks. Each sister possesses unique magical powers that grow and evolve, while they attempt to maintain normal lives in modern-day San Francisco. Keeping their supernatural identities separate and secret from their ordinary lives often becomes a challenge for them, with the exposure of magic having far-reaching consequences on their various relationships and resulting in a number of police and FBI investigations throughout the series. The series starts in 1998 when Phoebe Halliwell returns from New York and moves back into the family's Halliwell Manor in San Francisco to live with her sisters Prue and Piper. When Phoebe discovers the family's Book of Shadows in the attic, she learns that she and her sisters are the most powerful witches ever known, destined to protect both innocents and the world at large from demons, warlocks, and other evil creatures. Phoebe, reasonably suspecting the book to be a novelty, reads its initial inscription, unaware that it also happens to be an incantation activating the sisters' supernatural powers once all three are reunited in their ancestral home. By the end of the first episode, each sister learns that she has a unique magical power that allows them to cast spells and brew potions. Prue, the eldest, has the power of telekinesis, and in season 2 she develops the power of astral projection. Piper, the middle sister, has the power of molecular immobilization. As she grows more proficient, she learns how to freeze only certain people or objects or body parts, as she wishes. Jodha Akbar is an Indian fictional drama romantic television series aired from June 18, 2013 to August 7, 2015. Starring Raja Tokas and Paridi Sharma, it was a successful show with praises for its cast performances. Jodha Akbar is an epic drama that focuses on how the marriage policy brings the love of Jodha Bai and Akbar in a measure that has changed the destiny of India. This drama period also describes the wars of this time and the relations between the Mughals and Rajputs and how Jodha and Akbar face trials and tribulations to be together. The drama also focuses on the operating queens, courts, courtesans, ministers and their influence on the love story of Akbar and Jodha Bai. Finally, the show also portrays how Mughal Emperor Jalaluddin Muhammad acquires the title Akbar from the people of India. Jalaluddin Muhammad, a fearless warrior, son of Emperor Humayun and Hamida Banu Begum, became the emperor of the Mughal dynasty at a very young age. He is under the influence of Bairam Khan, his reagent, and Maham Anga, his foster mother. Bairam Khan has taught Jalal to be a ruthless and cruel ruler, and spread his rule by fear, conquer people by the sword. Jalal, following Bairam Khan's ideals becomes a heartless and fearsome ruler, whom the people dislike. He wants to conquer the entire Hindustan, and presently, he is eyeing the golden Rajputana. Jodha Bai, princess of Amar, daughter of Raja Barmal and Rani Mainavati, is a kind and intelligent young girl, who believes in ruling people's hearts and that rule is spread by love and togetherness, not by force. She decides to go to a faraway temple to offer prayers on her birthday, along with Modi Bai, her friend and aide. While offering prayers there, a band of Mughal soldiers come and start looting the jewelry of the goddess. When Modi Bai tries to stop them, they try to molest her. Angered at this, Jodha asks who could be so cruel as to rob people of their religions, to which a temple person replied Jalaluddin Muhammad. Jodha pledges to destroy Jalal and present his head in front of the goddess. The title of the series was criticized by members of the Kshatriya community as misleading, politically motivated historical revisionism that minimized Rajput history. The community protested against the series in Rajasthan, and alleged that if the name was not changed they would not let any Balaji Telefilms films to be released in the state. The Queen's Gambit is a 2020 American coming-of-age period drama streaming television miniseries based on the 1983 novel of the same name by Walter Tevis. 
The title refers to The Queen's Gambit, a chess opening. The series was written and directed by Scott Frank, who created it with Alan Scott, who owns the rights to the book. Beginning in the mid-1950s and proceeding into the 1960s, the story follows the life of Beth Harmon, a fictional chess prodigy on her rise to the top of the chess world while struggling with dependencies. Netflix released The Queen's Gambit on October 23, 2020. After four weeks it had become Netflix's most-watched scripted miniseries, making it Netflix's top program in 63 countries. The series received critical acclaim, with particular praise for Taylor Joy's performance, the cinematography, and production values. It also received a positive response from the chess community for its accurate depictions of high-level chess, and data suggests that it increased public interest in the game. The first episodes were immediately loved by millions of viewers. The plot was very intriguing. In 1950s Lexington, Kentucky, an eight-year-old Beth, having lost her mother in a car crash, is taken to an orphanage where she is taught chess by the building's custodian, Mr. Shabel. She quickly becomes a strong chess player due to her visualization skills. A few years later, Beth is adopted by childless suburban couple Alma and Alston Wheatley. As she adjusts to her new home, Beth enters a chess tournament and wins despite having no prior experience in competitive chess. Alma is initially resistant to Beth's interest in chess, but after Beth wins her first tournament, Alma is fully supportive of her adoptive daughter's sojourns to enter various chess competitions. With help from her oldest friend Jolene, whom she grew up with in the orphanage, she prepares for her biggest challenge yet, a major international chess tournament against the world's best players in Moscow. In October 2020, the series was the most watched show on Netflix in the United States. On November 23, 2020, Netflix announced that the series had been watched by 62 million households since its release. The series received praise from the chess community for its realistic portrayal of the game and players. Production designer Uli Hanisch developed the series sets to evoke the aesthetic of the 1950s and 1960s. Much of the series was filmed in Berlin because interiors found there could stand in for a large number of the show's locations, including Las Vegas, Cincinnati, Mexico City, Moscow, and Paris. Scrubs is an American medical comedy drama television series created by Bill Lawrence that aired from 2001 to 2010 on NBC and later ABC. The series follows the lives of employees at the fictional Sacred Heart Hospital, which is a teaching hospital. The title is a play on surgical scrubs and a term for a low-ranking person because at the beginning of the series, most of the main characters are medical interns. The series was noted for its fast-paced slapstick and surreal vignettes presented mostly as the daydreams of the central character, John Dorian, played by Zach Braff. The main cast for all but its last season consisted of Braff, Sarah Chulke, Donald Faison, Neil Flynn, Ken Jenkins, John C. McGinley, and Judy Reyes. Scrubs focuses on the unique point of view of its main character and narrator, Dr. John Michael Dorian for the first eight seasons, with season nine being narrated by the new main character Lucy Bennett. Most episodes feature multiple storylines thematically linked by voiceovers done by Braff, as well as the comical daydreams of JD. Almost every episode title for the first eight seasons begins with the word my. Bill Lawrence says this is because each episode is Dr. John Dorian writing in his diary. For the first eight seasons, the series featured seven main cast members, with numerous other characters recurring throughout the course of the series. Starting with the ninth season, many of the original cast left as regular characters, while four new additions were made to the main cast. The first season introduces John Michael Dorian and his best friend Christopher Turk in their first year out of medical school as interns at Sacred Heart Hospital. JD meets his reluctant mentor Perry Cox, an attractive female intern named Elliot, on whom he develops a crush. The hospital's janitor, who goes out of his way to make JD's life difficult. Chief of Medicine Dr. Bob Kelso, who is more concerned about the budget than the patients. And Carla Espinoza, the head nurse who eventually becomes Turk's girlfriend. The characters face romance and relationship issues, family obligations, overwhelming paperwork, long shifts, dealing with death of patients, and conflicting pressures from senior doctors. Breaking Bad is an American neo-western crime drama television series created and produced by Vince Gilligan. The series stars Brian Cranston as Walter White and Aaron Paul as his accomplice Jesse Pinkman. It was set and filmed in New Mexico, 
and tells the story of Walter White, an underpaid, overqualified, and dispirited high school chemistry teacher who is struggling with a recent diagnosis of stage 3 lung cancer. Walter turns to a life of crime, partnering with his former student Jesse Pinkman. Since its conclusion, the show has been lauded by critics as one of the greatest television series of all time. As the series progressed, Gilligan and the writing staff of Breaking Bad made Walter increasingly unsympathetic. Before completing the script, Gilligan revealed that it was difficult to develop the character of Walter White because the character was getting darker and more morally conflicted. Writing music for each episode takes about a week. Each episode's soundtrack was typically led by meetings between the composer, music supervisor, and music editor with Vince Gilligan and the key people involved in the episode's creation. They discussed where the music should be and where not. The first season received numerous awards and nominations, including four Primetime Emmy Award nominations with two wins. Brian Cranston won for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series and Lynn Willingham won for Outstanding Single Camera Picture Editing for a Drama Series. The first season of the series, starting with the pilot episode, introduces the viewer to the life of Walter White, a 50-year-old high school chemistry teacher from the city of Albuquerque. In addition to teaching, he is forced to work part-time at a car wash to support his pregnant wife and disabled son. However, Walter has to rethink his usual lifestyle when he is diagnosed with inoperable lung cancer. Good Omens is a fantasy comedy series created and written by Neil Gaiman, based on his and Terry Pratchett's 1990 novel of the same name. Michael Sheen and David Tennant lead a large ensemble cast as Aziraphale and Crowley respectively, an angel and a demon. Set in 2018, the series follows the demon Crowley and the angel Aziraphale, long-time acquaintances who, having grown accustomed to life on earth as representatives of heaven and hell, seek to prevent the coming of the Antichrist and with it Armageddon, the final battle between heaven and hell. Pratchett and Gaiman had planned to adapt Good Omens as a movie for years, with various directors and writers attached to the project along the way. In 2011, a television series, written by Terry Jones and Gavin Scott, was first reported to be in the works but no further plans were announced. After Pratchett's death, Gaiman refused to ever consider working on the adaptation alone but changed his mind when he received a letter from Pratchett, written to be sent after his death, urging him to finish the project. The first episode was very interesting to many viewers. The angel Aziraphale and demon Crowley meet for the first time at the Garden of Eden as Adam and Eve are expelled after Crowley tempts them with an apple. Fast forward 11 years before Armageddon. Crowley delivers the Antichrist to a satanic convent, where the baby is to be given to an American diplomat and his family. However, a mix-up occurs and the Antichrist ends up with a middle-class English family, the Youngs. Crowley and Aziraphale meet to discuss the coming apocalypse. Aziraphale reluctantly agrees to work with Crowley. They decide that if each works to influence the boy warlock, whom they believe to be the Antichrist, he will be neither good nor evil, just normal. In the present day, Crowley and Aziraphale attend his 11th birthday party, but realize they have the wrong boy when the Hellhound fails to appear. Meanwhile, the Hellhound has found his master, Adam Young. Adam names him Dog, which changes him into a small terrier, unknowingly initiating Armageddon. Arcane is an adult animated action-adventure streaming television series created by Christian Link and Alex Yee for Netflix. Arcane's first season was released to critical acclaim, with praise directed at its animation, story, world-building, action sequences, characters, emotional weight and voice acting. Some have noted the series' appeal to both casual viewers who have never played League of Legends and to longtime fans of the game. It also set the record as Netflix's highest-rated series so far within a week of its premiere, ranked first on the Netflix Top 10 chart in 52 countries, and ranked second on the chart in the United States. The site's critical consensus reads, Arcane makes an arresting first impression, combining a spectacular mix of 2D and 3D animation with an emotionally compelling story to deliver a video game adaptation that could become legendary. The first episode, which introduces the viewer to what is going on, has a very interesting and gripping plot. Rebels from the repressed undercity of Zaun march across a bridge into Piltover, resulting in the brutal pushback by Piltover enforcers. During the ensuing violence, Sisters Powder and Vi find their parents dead in the rubble and are taken in by Vander, the leader of the failed rebellion, as his own children. Years later, 
Vi and Powder rob a Piltavan penthouse with their adopted brothers, Milo and Clagger, after receiving a tip from their friend Echo. Powder steals a set of magical crystals, accidentally shattering one when the owner of the penthouse returns. The resulting explosion destroys a large portion of the building and alerts enforcers to their presence, whom they narrowly escape. Returning to the Undercity, the siblings encounter Deckard and his thugs, while they beat them in a fistfight, Powder is chased and loses the loot. Vander, now a barman and a de facto community leader in Zaun, scolds the children for their carelessness, and attempts to smooth things over with Grayson, the sheriff of the enforcers. Vi berates Milo for calling Powder a jinx and reassures her sister that things will get better. In the lowest parts of the Undercity, crime lord Silco extracts information from Deckard and tests a new mutagen known as Shimmer on a Rat. Better Call Saul is an American crime drama television series created by Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould. It is a spin-off, prequel, and a sequel to Gilligan's previous series, Breaking Bad. Set primarily in the early to middle part of the 2000s in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the series develops Jimmy McGill, an earnest lawyer and former con artist, into an egocentric criminal defense attorney known as Saul Goodman. Also shown is the moral decline of retired police officer Mike Ehrmantraut, who becomes closely affiliated with the Juarez drug cartel to support his granddaughter and her widowed mother. These two storylines are mostly told separately but do converge when Jimmy and Mike work together. At the start of the series, Jimmy struggles financially while working as a court-appointed lawyer. He lives in the back room of a nail salon which doubles as an office. Better Call Saul has received critical acclaim, with particular praise for its acting, characters, writing, direction, and cinematography, many critics have called it a worthy successor to Breaking Bad and one of the greatest television series of all time, with some deeming it superior to its predecessor. It has garnered many nominations. Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould began planning a television spin-off of Breaking Bad as early as 2009. Each episode's title sequence features a different low-quality image that recalls Saul Goodman's days on Breaking Bad. This includes the inflatable Statue of Liberty balloon that sat atop Saul's office, a drawer of burner phones kept in his desk, and a bench that advertised his business at a bus stop. Gould and Gilligan were inspired by the notoriously low production values of 1980s public access television, and from the fact that Saul Goodman's ads on Breaking Bad were done in the same style. They intended for the title sequences to appear purposefully awful in order to stand out from those of its contemporaries, which generally had increased visual quality and production standards. Some of the title sequences were put together from unused footage from Breaking Bad, but others were filmed specifically to create new ones. Better Call Saul has received critical acclaim and is considered to be an outstanding example of how to successfully produce a prequel and spin-off work that defies expectations. Many critics have called Better Call Saul a worthy successor to Breaking Bad and some have even deemed it superior to its predecessor. Forever is an American fantasy crime drama television series that aired on ABC. Created by Matt Miller, it centers on the character of Dr. Henry Morgan, an immortal New York City medical examiner who uses his extensive knowledge to assist the New York City Police Department in solving crimes and to discover a way to end his immortality. Flashbacks within each episode reveal various details of Henry's life. The concept for Forever came from a conversation between series creator Matt Miller and his son about death. After the conversation, Miller began to imagine what life would be like if a person was immortal but everyone else, including that person's own children, were mortals. He created a character who viewed immortality as a curse because of the pain of seeing family and friends die and who would attempt to find a way to end his immortality. That concept informed Miller's decision to make his character a doctor-turned-medical examiner who used his occupation for research into his immortality. Another series-long story arc explored how other people learn of Henry's immortality. The first storyline in the arc was the season's second story arc, Henry's determination to learn the identity of a second immortal who knows about it. The second immortal character's morals would contrast his protagonist's morals, serving as an antagonist for the main character. Beginning with the pilot, Miller structured each episode by telling two stories in the episode. The first was a traditional procedural plotline. The second story was a flashback from Henry's past. The Witch 
Preacher is a Polish-American fantasy drama television series created by Lauren Schmidt Hisrich, based on the book series of the same name. Set on a fictional, medieval-inspired landmass known as the Continent, The Witcher explores the legend of Geralt of Rivia and Princess Ciri, who are linked to each other by destiny. It stars Henry Cavill, Freya Allen and Anya Kalatra. The story begins with Geralt of Rivia, Crown Princess Ciri of Sintra, and the sorceress Yennefer of Vengerberg at different points of time, exploring formative events that shaped their characters throughout first season, before eventually merging into a single timeline. Geralt and Ciri are linked by destiny since before she was born when he unknowingly demanded her as a reward for his services by invoking the Law of Surprise. After the two finally meet, the Witcher becomes the princess's protector and must help her and fight against her various pursuers to prevent her elder blood and powerful magic from being used for malevolent purposes and keep Ciri and their world safe. Sonia Belusova and Giona Ostinelli composed the soundtrack for the first season. The duo collaborated with several soloists and artists. The soundtrack features many medieval instruments to match the medieval-inspired setting of the series. More of 60 different instruments from around the world were used to create the soundtrack. In an interview, the author of the Witcher novels admitted that he was disappointed in the series and considered the series to be only a mediocre adaptation of his books that had little in common with them. But in the same interview he noted another important aspect, saying that the creators of the series are entitled to their own vision of the story they invented. House is an American medical drama television series. The series' main character is Dr. Gregory House, an unconventional, misanthropic medical genius who leads a team of diagnosticians at the fictional Princeton Plainsboro Teaching Hospital in New Jersey. The series' premise originated with Paul Atanasio, while David Shore, who is credited as creator, was primarily responsible for the conception of the title character. House often clashes with his fellow physicians, including his own diagnostic team, because many of his hypotheses about patients' illnesses are based on subtle or controversial insights. His flouting of hospital rules and procedures frequently leads him into conflict with his boss, hospital administrator and dean of medicine Dr. Lisa Cuddy. House was among the top 10 series in the United States from its second season through the fourth season. Distributed to 66 countries, House was the most-watched television program in the world in 2008. The show received numerous awards, including five Primetime Emmy Awards, two Golden Globe Awards, a Peabody Award, and nine People's Choice Awards. On 2012 Fox announced that the eighth season, then in progress, would be its last. The series is structured around a central plot with some supporting secondary stories and narratives that cross over seasons. Most episodes revolve around the diagnosis of a primary patient and start with a cold open set outside the hospital, showing events ending with the onset of the patient's symptoms. The typical episode follows the team in their attempts to diagnose and treat the patient's illness, which often fail until the patient's condition is critical. They usually treat only patients whom other doctors have not accurately diagnosed, and House routinely rejects cases he does not find interesting. Yellowstone is an American drama television series created by Taylor Sheridan and John Linson that premiered on June 20, 2018, on Paramount Network. In 2013, Taylor Sheridan began work on the series, having recently grown tired of acting and begun writing screenplays. On May 3, 2017, Paramount Network announced that it had greenlit its first scripted series, Yellowstone. Paramount issued a series order for a first season consisting of 10 episodes. The series stars Kevin Costner, Luke Grimes, Wes Bentley, Kelly Riley, Cole Hauser, and Gil Birmingham. The series follows the conflicts along the shared borders of a large cattle ranch, an Indian reservation, and land developers. The series follows the Dutton family, owners of the largest ranch in Montana, the Yellowstone Dutton Ranch, commonly called the Yellowstone. The plot revolves around family drama at the ranch and the bordering Broken Rock Indian Reservation, National Park, and developers. The territory of the Yellowstone Ranch is a tidbit for the neighbors. But John Dutton, thanks to his sons Lee and Jamie and manager Rip Wheeler, deflects all attacks. John's middle son, Casey, lives on the reservation with his wife and son, rides wild horses, and does not want to communicate with his father. But the new head of this Indian reservation, Thomas Rainwater, is looking for an excuse to start a confrontation with John in order to weaken him and then buy back his land. 
To do this, he enlists all the disgruntled and ambitious politicians in Montana, and also takes a closer look at Casey. The same territory is claimed by millionaire real estate developer Dan Jenkins, who wants to build a huge luxury block next to the ranch.